For I am crucified with Christ And yet I live Embrace the cross Welcome to Crossbound Ministries, where we are bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world, encouraging Christians and pointing sinners to the cross. Will you please pray about supporting our broadcast and ministry that gives us the ability to spread God's word? You can get involved by going to crossboundministry.com. Please welcome our preacher, Mike Sadler, as he brings us an important message from God's word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Open your Bible with me to 1 John. 1 John, as we start our walk through 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, pulling out the nuggets of gold and truth that God has for us that we can apply to our lives. Amen. So the Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, verse number 1, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen, With our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. The doctrinal foundation of all true fellowship is in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is nothing more important to the Lord Jesus Christ than the soul of a person. He wants fellowship with each and every one of you. That's why we were created, to have fellowship with him. Now, we brought sin into the world, Adam and Eve, and that put up a wall between us and God. But Jesus tore down that wall when he died on the cross and defeated death, hell, and the grave. Amen. And once you put your faith and trust in him, you are reconciled to God. You have fellowship with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. And there can be no true fellowship with those who have false views concerning Jesus. Listen to what I said. You can have no real fellowship with people that have a wrong and false view of Jesus. Jesus is God in the flesh. And this verse teaches his eternity and the reality of his incarnation. In other words, he beat death, hell, and the grave. He rose from the grave. The same one who existed from all eternity. See, he, he didn't he wasn't created. No, he's always existed existed. He is part of the I am. Like God said in the Old Testament when he was asked, Well, who do I say you are? I am. He always has been and he always will be. And Jesus is part of that Trinity. So he's the one who has existed from all eternity with God the Father but came down into this world as a real man to save me and you from the penalty of sin. Thank God for that. And so the word of life, the word of life here, as mentioned in the verse, was not a mere passing illusion, but a real person, a real person in the flesh. God in the flesh, in other words. Let's look at verse number two. First John chapter number one, verse number two. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show it unto you, that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. Get that part, was manifested unto us. So verse 2 confirms that the one who was with the Father, and whom John calls the eternal life, he became flesh. And he dwelt among us. They could see him with their own eyes. They could touch him with their own hands. They could speak to him with their own lips. They could hear him with their own ears. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, the Bible says. And that is Jesus. Listen to me. You listen to this statement. I'm glad that my knowledge of eternal life 
is not built on speculations of some philosopher. It's not even built on some speculations of a theologian. No, the disciples themselves witnessed it firsthand. And we have their testimony and Jesus' testimony in the Bible, in God's word. Thank God that, that my knowledge is not built on some theologian or some philosopher or some big name. No, my faith is built on the word of God. I have the testimony of the disciples and the testimony of Jesus himself. And you have that too in your Bible. Thank God for that. Doesn't that shine a new light on the Bible and what it is to us and what it has for us? Amen. It is what God has to speak to you in this day. That's how important the Bible is. Let's look at the next verse. 1 John chapter 1, verse number 3. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. The, apostle, the apostles did not keep this wonderful news a secret. And we shouldn't neither. Go tell it on a mountain. That's what the song said is, isn't it? Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is Lord. Don't hold it a secret. Make sure that you're bold about it, that you're a witness. And I realize that there is some personality plays a role in that factor. Some people are just loud and brass about things and others are, are quiet and meek about things. I realize that. I certainly do. But listen, you can be quiet and meek and still spread the gospel. You can be quiet and meek and still tell it on the mountain. Amen. So don't hide your faith. Thank God that those didn't, the apostles didn't. No, they put it right out there for us to see. They didn't keep it a secret. Amen. And all who receive the testimony of the apostles have fellowship with the Father, with his Son, Jesus Christ, and with, listen, with all other born again believers. So many will put themselves in a bubble and say, well, you're not this. Well, you're not that. Well, I can't, I can't talk to you. I can't have lunch with you. Well, you had lunch with so-and-so, so I can't have lunch with you. Do you think God's pleased with that? No, sir, no, ma'am. If somebody is a true believer, you may disagree on certain doctrines in the Bible, but the big doctrine that Jesus Christ is Lord, that you must be born again, that is the foundation of Christianity. And listen to me, if somebody believes that they are your brothers and sisters in Christ, you may disagree on other things, but you still should love them. Don't shun them. Amen. So how wonderful that guilty sinner should have ever be brought into fellowship with God the Father and with his son Jesus Christ. And yet, that is the very truth which we have here. How a sorry sinner like myself can be brought into fellowship with the thrice holy God through the work that Jesus did on that cross. Amen. Christ is the name that speaks of him as God anointed one, the Messiah. In other words, therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ, we have a witness. We have a witness to his humanity and to his deity. Christ is very, is Christ is God. Amen. Let's look at verse number four. First John chapter one, verse number four. The Bible says, and these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. Isn't that wonderful? I'm writing these things unto you that your joy might be full. So why are John's writings concerned with the subject of fellowship? If you realize here, he's writing about fellowship, fellowship with God, fellowship with Jesus, fellowship one with another, fellowship with Christians. Amen. Because there can be no true fellowship outside of believing who Jesus truly is. The reason is that our joy might be full. That's what he's telling you right here. I'm writing you this, that your joy might be full. John realized that the world is not capable. The world is not capable of providing true, lasting joy for the human heart. But this joy can only come through the proper relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to me. It's even in our constitution it's even in our constitution, life, liberty, and the pursuit 
of happiness. These men realized that they were chasing after, they didn't write life, liberty, and happiness. No, they wrote life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Happiness is a fleeing thing. Happiness will run away from you. Happiness is having a good job and you lose it, then you're unhappy. Happy is having a bank account. Unhappy would be somebody robbing you that bank account. But listen to me, when you have the joy of Jesus in your heart, nobody can take that. He said, lay up treasure in heaven where it can't be stolen, where it don't does, does not rust. You cannot lose it, amen? And so when a person is in fellowship with God and with the Lord Jesus, they have a deep-seated joy that cannot be disturbed by these earthly circumstances. See, circumstances come and circumstances go. If you base your, your, your happiness and your joy on those circumstances, like I've got a good job, I have a nice home, I have a good amount of money in the bank, I have everything set up the way I want it, those are circumstances. And let me just tell you, those circumstances can change in just a moment. You can get a diagnosis tomorrow that you're eat up with cancer and you have 90 days left to live. Somebody could rob you and you lose every dollar that you have. You might get fired at work for something you didn't even do. Your house might burn down. Those are all circumstances. But listen, when your joy is rooted in Jesus, nobody can take that away. You see, he puts a joy in your heart that, that can only come from God. He can fill a place that nobody else can fill. Everything else in life is empty. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't be a good steward of what God has given you. If you have a business or a company or a home or a bank account or a wife and a marriage and kids, you should be a good steward of that. God has called you to be a good steward of that and make wise decisions. But just make sure that he is on the throne of your heart and those things, those earthly possessions are not what is taking the preeminence in your life. Make sure that Jesus is on, is on the throne of your heart. Let's look at the next verse. 1 John chapter 1, verse number 5. This, then, is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Do you know that you could go in the darkest room on the planet and one single, small, tiny light, no matter how small, can drive out all the darkness in that room? And you think about yourself, well, I'm not that bold. I'm not that brass. I don't have this great testimony. I don't have this great big Christian name. None of that matters. But if you're a child of God, you have the light within you. And you listen to what I said again. The smallest amount of light can drive out all the darkness in a room. Praise God for that. That's what Jesus can do through you if you will allow him. And so fellowship describes a situation where two or more persons or things they share in common. It's a a com communion, a partnership, and John here instructs his readers as to the requirements, as to the requirements for fellowship with God. Yes, there are some requirements for having fellowship with God. So here's the sum and substance of his teaching, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all, at all, nothing, no darkness at all. God is light. And by this, he meant that God is absolutely holy, God is absolutely righteous, and God is absolutely pure. God cannot look with any favor on any form of sin. God cannot look at you as a sinner and say, I love you so much, I'm just going to save you without you even putting your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. No, he can't do that. Why? Because he is totally righteous, totally pure, and totally holy. And that's why he made a way. For us to be saved through his son. You see, God is righteous, just, and holy, and son, sin must be punished. And he did that through the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus willfully did that for the fellowship that he would have with us. He said, No man take my life, I lay it down. 
Amen. He laid it down for you and for me so that we could have fellowship with God the Father, fellowship with him. Now, when you look at sin, doesn't that put a new light on it? God did all this. Jesus laid down his life so that I might have fellowship with God. And here I am allowing sin into my life or I'm willfully sinning and I am breaking the fellowship that I have with God. Now, be careful. I'm not saying you can lose your salvation. No, I don't believe that at all. All. The Bible says when you are saved, you are sealed unto the day of redemption until God calls for you and you stand before God. God has put a seal on you. He has put a piece of the Holy Spirit within you. And that is the seal that seals you unto the day of redemption. God is so serious about it that he put a piece of himself inside of you. And the Bible even says that the angels, they marvel at that, that they desire to look into those things. They're marveled by it. Isn't that something that God loved you that much? You know, he didn't make a way for the fallen angels to be saved. They have no way to be redeemed. They have no way to be saved. But he loved me and he loved you enough that he made a way for us. And the angels are marveled by, by that. The Bible says they desire to look into it. And so you think about that, those things that Jesus did to have fellowship with us. And when we allow sin in our life or we willfully sin, we, we are breaking the bridge that Jesus built to have fellowship with God. Doesn't that make sin look so much worse? It certainly does for me. Let's look at the next verse. First John chapter one, verse number six. The Bible says, if we say that we have fellowship with him, and we walk in darkness, we lie, and do not the truth. In order for a person to be in fellowship with God, there can be no hiding of sin. You can't hide anything from God anyways. But oh, how we try sometimes, don't we? Like Jonah. Jonah's going to run from God. And you think, what a joke. God can see everything, and he knows everything. But yet Jonah himself ran from God. And many do. Now, we may not do like Jonah where we run across the country, but we run in our own heart and we run away from God. God says, I want you to do that. I want you to give that. I want you to be nice to them. I want you to volunteer there. I want you to do this for me. And we run away and we say, I, I, I got other things I need to do. And that, that just comes with trust in God. You know, many times in my own life, I've noticed that I've, I trust God with everything except for my finances or what's important to me, or my checkbook. Say, so God, I want you to save me and take care of me and watch over me. But this part over here, I'm going to take care of this part, Lord. No, it doesn't work like that. If you're going to trust God, you've got to trust God with everything. Amen? And hiding that sin in your heart, you can't hide it from God. Because light and darkness cannot exist in a person's life at the same time any more than they can exist together in the same room. Light and darkness don't exist in the same room. Remember what I said? The small amount of light can run all the darkness out of a room. So just as light and darkness do not stay together in a room, they cannot stay together in your life, in your personal walk with Jesus. If a person is walking in darkness, they are not in fellowship with God, is what the Bible is saying. And habitually walking in sin and darkness that's a good sign that you really need to check your salvation. I'm not trying to make you doubt your salvation. But the Bible says, the Apostle Paul said, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Know that you know that you know that you have been born again. So habitually walking in darkness, you really need to check your walk with Jesus. But also go back and check your salvation and make sure that you've made that commitment, that you have been born again. Look with me now in verse number 7. 1 John chapter 1, verse number 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Mark that down, ladies and gentlemen. What cleanseth us from all sin? The Bible says the blood of Jesus Christ. It didn't just say Christ. No, it was specific. It said the blood of Jesus Christ, 
His Son cleanseth us from all sin. You see, the life of the flesh is in the blood. Amen. So if a person walks in the light, then they can have fellowship with the Lord Jesus. And with his fellow Christians, if you're walking in the light, as he is in the light. Why? Because you have a common goal. You have fellowship one with another. And as far as John is concerned in his passions, a man is either in the light or he's in the darkness. If he is in the light, he is a member of God's family. Amen. Now, can a Christian sin? Can a Christian fall off into darkness? Absolutely. Absolutely. A Christian can do anything an unsaved person can do. See, there's something that's so sacred, God won't touch it, and that is your free will. God wants you to choose Him. First, starting with salvation. And then, second, starting with serving Him and obeying Him. Those who walk in the light, that is those who are Christians, have fellowship one with another. Amen? And the blood of Jesus Christ continually, continually, continually cleanses them from all sin. Now, that is not a license to sin. But did God give you grace after you're saved that he will forgive your sins? Absolutely he does. All God's forgiveness is based on the blood of his son that was shed at Calvary. And that blood provided God with a righteous basis, a righteous basis on which he can forgive our sins and have fellowship with us. Verse number eight. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Fellowship with God requires that we acknowledge the truth concerning our own self. You see, you've got to see your own self for what you really are, not in your own distorted mirror of how important you are. No, but to see yourself through the eyes of Scripture, the way that God sees you. You know, for instance, to deny that we have a sinful nature means we're being self-deceptive to ourself and we're being untruthful to ourselves. And it's interesting in verse number eight and verse number nine. In verse number eight, he calls it sin. But then we're going to read verse number nine. He calls it sins, plural. And so John makes that distinction in verse eight sins and verse nine sins refers to the corrupt evil nature. Sin refers to who we are. We are sinners. And actually, what we are is a lot worse than anything we have ever done. You say, explain that, preacher. Okay, here we go. Jesus said, if a man even look at a woman and lust after her, he has committed adultery with her in his own heart. He didn't actually do it. But the Bible says that he might as well have because he already did it in his own heart. And so where he says sin, he's talking about what we really are. We're sinners. Sins would be the actual sins that we commit. But praise the Lord, Christ died for our sin and our sins. Conversion does not mean that it totally eradicates the sin nature out of your life. But it means that it is implanted a new divine nature, the power to live victorious over sin in your life. Here's an example. Here in this life, you're saved, you are saved from the penalty of sin. When you're saved, you're not going to hell. And when you're saved, you are saved from the power of sin in your life. It no longer has, unless you give it the power, but Christ has given you the power over sin in this life. And the last part is to be one day you'll be saved from the total presence of sin. Make sure that you have made that determination with Jesus Christ, that you have been born again, that you're walking in the light that you see yourself the way God sees you. Amen? Make sure that you have been born again and you're walking in fellowship with Him. We pray you have been blessed by today's message. If you have been saved or are in need of a prayer, please contact us at 352-247-9200. That's 352-247-9200. Thank you for tuning in to Crossbound Ministries radio broadcast. Will you please pray about supporting our ministry and broadcast? You can go to crossboundministry.com or send your support or a gift to P.O. Box 7, Inverness, Florida, 34451. 
That's P.O. Box 7, Inverness, Florida, 34451. For a gift of $10 or more, we will send you a booklet. Please pray for us as our ministry and radio broadcast grows. Tune in every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. to hear a message from our preacher, Mike Sadler. You can follow Crossbound Ministry on Facebook, YouTube, and visit us on the web at crossboundministry.com. If you are a pregnant woman in need of help, there is hope. You can reach out to the Citrus Pregnancy Center. There are locations in Inverness and in Crystal River. Their phone number is 352-341-5176. That's 352-341-5176. This broadcast has been sponsored in part by Henley's Grading Incorporated for all your land clearing and hauling needs. Located in Hernando, Florida, 352-897-3507. That's 352-897-3507. This program is sponsored by Crossbound Ministry of Inverness, Florida.